Welcome, Starseeds. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to introduce you to Pam Osley. Hi, Pam. Hi, how are you? <laughs> She's just a phenom, period. She has brought this technology of aura reading to the planet in a way that I don't know if anyone else has. So she can speak about auras. If you listen to her TED Talks, which I did, she is like, <laughs> Pam, you blew me away. For very, very straightforward communication, very simple to understand, talking about very advanced technologies and how we all have this within us and how there's an awakening. And you said it so simply like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like everybody should be able to do this. But I like the way that you made it so tangible and you made it so available that we actually feel like it's possible that I could learn how to read an aura. And so maybe you could explain more about what is an aura and how to go about learning how to use this ability. Okay, that's just one of the things we can do, right? Yes. Okay, so first of all, um, an aura is an energy field. It's called an electromagnetic field, whatever you want to call it. They do measure it, but it's an energy field. And um, yes, I see them and I feel them and I sense them. And just so you know, everyone can do this and we've all felt them. That's why you can be around somebody for the first time, you meet them for the first time, and you either feel like, oh, I could be next to this person, this is great, and other people go, whoa, I don't even want to be in the room with you. Yeah. You're feeling the energy that they're radiating. So the way I see auras, and, and people are different. I've encountered healers that they experience, they see the aura, they feel it, but they see different colors than I do, which is okay. It's like we taste food differently too, right? Right. There are people that, I, that like Brussels sprouts, and I know they're not tasting what I'm tasting. Right. <laughs> anyway. So it's an energy field that radiates off. It's like glowing lights that come off. Well, we're made of energy. Right. So it's not surprising that we radiate energy too, right? Everything's made of energy. Right. So the way that I see auras, and I've met a lot of people that see the same things I do in the same colors, is I see different colored bands that radiate off mm -hmm. of a person. And in my experience, the one or two bands of color that are the closest to a person's body or what we call your life colors. Those show, they reveal, not run you, they don't um, control you. They reveal who you are. They reveal what you've chosen to be in this lifetime, the theme you've chosen, how you are in relationship, what you're gonna need in relationship, careers that are gonna be fulfilling for you. Right, um, wow. Potential health issues, all kinds of things are revealed in those two colors. Just like, see, I, I believe that when we chose to come to the planet, we had a theme, we had a, a plan, we had a desire of who we wanted to be and what we wanted to experience. And right. those are revealed in those two colors, just like we left breadcrumbs behind. It's in our astrology, mm -hmm. our numerology, our iridology, our palmistry, all those clues are in there. Bands, the outer bands in the aura change all the time, depending on what's going on with you at the time. So for example, if somebody gets really angry, I see red flaring up in the outer bands. But once you're not angry anymore, that red dissipates. That's different than a red life color or a red overlay. They're different. So anyway, that's how I see the aura. And it's an energy field that radiates. It glows off of you, almost like a light from a light bulb. So do you have to go into an altered state? Like, do you have to go into some other version of how you see things internally? Um, you know what? Everything's an altered state. So yes, but it's not really dramatic. I don't have to. I mean, I see them all the time. I, I can turn it off if I want. I can ignore it. Just like I explain to people, say you're walking down the street, you notice people are wearing clothes. You don't always notice what they're wearing. You were talking about, uh, so people are walking, you're walking down the street, you see people and you don't necessarily right. see an aura right away. Um, I can see an aura right away if I focus oh. on it. I can choose not to see it or pay attention to it. Just like if you're walking down the street, you know, people are wearing clothes, but you don't always choose to focus on the right. colors they're wearing or how it looks on them. I can, I can blank it out. If right. I focus on them, if I look at them, yeah, I can see their aura. Wow. So now I understand that auras, okay, it has the different bands. So it goes out to a certain degree. Do they all kind of end at the same place? Like, is there no. a certain amount of colors? Everybody's got different size. Most people have approximately six feet of bands out from them. Approximately. Wow. You have violet in your aura and you violets always have big auras. <laughs> because unless they're damaged or afraid. I'm trying to pull my aura in like this is too much. <laughs> violets, violets are here to reach the masses. Yeah. They need to have audiences. They need to be able to extend their energy out so that they can reach people. They can reach audiences. So does so, that, is that the, per, does, is the purple out on like the furthest layer or is that the closest layer to where you are? 
but um, for you, for example, you have yellow and violet. Those are the two closest to your body. Okay. Wow. I see yellow first, then I see violet. Um, and it doesn't matter what order they're in because sometimes you'll be doing more yellow and I can describe what that means, the different colors if you want. Cause I, I see 14 different aura colors. So wow. one of the colors tell a different story about your personality, who you are, your theme. So you've got yellow first and then violet, and you're always going to be yellow violet. I mean, you have free will. I would never, I've got yellow too. We yellows, we're pleasers, we're nice people. We've got a sense of humor, but we also don't like being told what to do. Yellows right. have stubborn okay. um, And violets want to do it their way too, but it's right. different. Anyway, so those two colors are the bands closest to your body. And then they, the other colors are in your outer bands. So for example, you've got some blue in your outer bands because you've got family or children or pets or whatever that that's kind of a nurturing caretaking type of color. But um, though it doesn't matter what order they're in because sometimes you're gonna be more yellow, which mm -hmm. is, as yellow as if they had their way wouldn't be working at all unless it was fun, right. okay? They either wanna do creative projects or they want to do healing work, or they want to do physical things like yoga instructors. So yellows need variety. They don't want to just do one thing. They get bored if it's one thing. They want this and some of this and some of this and some of this. Lots of energy. Right. That's what it feels like. Sometimes you're doing more yellow. Mm -hmm. So the yellow will be bigger at that point. And then other times you'll be doing more violet. So the yellow will behave itself because yellows are animated. Yellows have a hard time sitting still still lots of energy lots of energy like the energizer right. bunny ba, 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 ba. Sure. when yellows uh, when the violet in you kicks in more mm -hmm. violets are visionaries they come from the third eye violets um are here to help shift the consciousness of the planet to improve the quality of life for people they're visionaries they're teachers they're leaders you violets see things way ahead of other people and you don't understand why people don't see it you think it's just common sense right well, violets are, yellows are big kids at heart and violets are kind of the old, say, the sages, the True. wisdom. They either get involved in the arts or the media. So they're writers and filmmakers and, and entertainers and dancers and performers, musicians. So they get involved in the arts or the media or they get involved in teaching or psychology or ministry, something because violets have to reach the masses. Blues and yellows can do one-on-one. -on -one. Violets have to reach the masses. They need it because otherwise it's too small. They don't want to just you say the word have to, because that's what it feels like. It feels like we have no choice. <laughs> we get up in the morning. It's a Violet. driving force. Is yeah. what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Or violets will get involved in causes or politics and law. They're very global, very cosmic. They've got to do something bigger for the masses. Yeah. And if you don't, you guys can either get frustrated or impatient or depressed or you know, it's like violets. And by the way, a lot of violets get accused of being unrealistic dreamers because what violets, when, I, when you see how fast I'm talking, yes. it's because you have violet in your aura, okay? Yes. If you were a tan, tans were, are very logical, analytical. They're the opposite of a violet. Tans are very logical, analytical, computer programmers, engineers, um, accountants, very step one, step two, step three, very yes. logical, very grounded. Are they, very are they like the, considered the builders? They're the detail-oriented people. Mm -hmm. They're analytical. They're in their heads. They want to know the data, the logic, the steps. You don't want to race it. You don't want to push a tan because they're like, whoa, whoa. If you, if you make me jump from one to 10, the foundation might crack or right. fall apart. But you've got to build it, yes, but analyze it. So, Where, so the, violets will go 150. <laughs> so these auras, it sounds like we're born with this particular structure, this kind of mindset. So our auras are kind of there, right? We coming, like following us along in our lives, just kind of like a born a violet, you stay a violet type of thing is what I'm gathering. Or can yeah. you evolve from one color to another? Or is there a, it just, it does it just change on your focus? It's a, uh, so sometimes you'll be more yellow and sometimes you'll be more violet. You understand? So yes. violets are making more serious and more focused and driven. Okay. So that's wherever your at. intention, your focus is at. Yes. With your life colors. Now, um, um, can your auras change? First of all, I would never tell someone they can't change something ever, ever, ever. I don't like limitations. That's a violet thing. Right. Um, <laughs> I do. So, so I, I believe in free will. And so I believe anything's possible right. in the 35 plus years I've been doing this work, I've probably seen three to four, maybe three or four, maybe five people change their life colors only because wow. they completed it. They accomplished it. It's like, I did it. I'm over it. I'm on to something new. I totally um, see that. And I've known people who have changed their life paths so incredibly. And they probably went like from, yeah, 
from one help to another. Well, sometimes what it is, just so you know, more often than not, what I've seen happen is people have think they're supposed to be something else. And so their whole life they've been, well, I'm a yellow, but, but I, I think I'm supposed to be a tan or I think I'm supposed to be a blue. So I'm going to live my life that way. And then, I'll, and then at some point, their real self starts emerging. So, I'll, and I've seen that a lot, but oddly enough with yellow violets, most people have two colors, most. Some people just have one. But because violets get accused of being unrealistic dreamers, they, they haven't always felt like they fit in here. They want to be outside the box. They, and they, they want to be bigger dreamers, bigger visionaries, global, international travel. They want to do something bigger. Yes. And in, in the world, they're not always trained to think that's responsible or practical or even realistic. Right. So I've seen a lot of them put tan around them so they can get paychecks because uh, violets would prefer to do their own projects. Violets don't want to work for other people. They want to be independent and freedom. Freedom's a big thing for violets. That explains wanna... a lot for people yeah. I've met. Or yeah, they want to be able to... bursting. They're bursting inside themselves and they're yeah. in a very structured environment and they're going by the rules, doing everything right. Everything's, you know... But inside, you can see this burning, like they just want to burst out. That's it. That's yeah. it. So, and the reason I describe aura colors and describe what the personalities are, not to limit people, not to box them, just the opposite. It's to give them permission to be who they really are. Mm. It's to help them really live their fulfillment and why they came to the planet. And it also helps us understand each other. So we're not can you personally read auras if the person is not directly in front of you physically? So you can yeah. tune in and actually see the color. Or yeah, that's that, that's one of the other skills that I have is non-local mind. It's our, our minds are our, our consciousness is not limited to our brains. OK, that's like saying the shows that you're watching on TV came from the TV set. No, it didn't. It was more expansive. So, yes, I, I do readings all the time. I had, uh, you know, I've been on television, radio. I do it on the phone all the time. I do it on Zoom. Um, I, I talk to people who have crossed over. So I can even tell what they were like and what their aura colors were when they were in this incarnation. So when you first started out, it, when this first, when it came to be and you realized that you could read auras, did you know that that's what you were seeing? No, I started out the other way around. Thank you for asking oh, that. Okay. Um, about 35, a little over 35 years ago, I um, went to hear a psychic speak. I went into the room, a shaman from England, walked into the room to hear him speak, to do readings. And he pulled me up in front of the group that night and said, but you, you have this ability. I want you to tell people what you see about them. It wasn't auras. I was, I, I found out I was being able to be psychic or clairvoyant or intuitive, whatever word you want to put to it. I found very, I found that I was seeing very detailed information about people I didn't even know. Wow. So I started out by expanding. I, I like to call it expanding, expanded consciousness you know, as opposed to psychics got such an old connotation, whatever, but expanded consciousness. I went outside the, the norm and found I knew things about people, including that one woman was pregnant. She didn't even know she was pregnant because I saw the spirit of a little girl standing next to her. I'd never seen that before in my life. Wow. But I saw the spirit of a little girl standing next to her. She went and found out she was pregnant and she had a little girl. Oh, so detail like that. So first I was doing that type of work. And then a year into doing that type of work, I met a woman who could see auras. And I would start, I would bring her to Santa Barbara, which is where I live, mm -hmm. to do workshops. And I noticed that what she was describing about people with the aura colors fit with what I had been picking up about people psychically. And so I go, oh, that's a green. Oh, that's a red. Okay, now I get it. Because there were similar personality types that I was seeing in people. Right. So then uh, within a year of meeting her and doing work with her, I developed the ability to be able to sense them and then see them myself, which is why I can do it on the phone or on the radio or whatever without seeing people because I can tune into the frequency. So you said the key word is developed. That is a very important word because just like in any modality and including in psychic, clairvoyancy, mediumship, anything, you can start out in one spot and know something about your skills and abilities, but it's honing in and developing. That's a huge thing, right? Because the more you focus and, and get intentional about your skill, it develops. Right. Well, it's like anything. We've learned everything by practicing it, right? right? Driving a car, walking, eating, writing, um, musicians, learning to play the piano. You know, we can all learn how to play chopsticks. But, you know, if you really want to learn how to be really good at it, you, you hone it, you develop it, you 
practice it. And when you do that, you're able to see clearer, right? You see more vibrant colors. You can see more in depth. As yeah, the more you do this, the more you do this, the stronger the ability develops. Now, sure. I, I could hear my star seeds right now in my group page, and I know they're asking, well, how can I learn how to read auras? Is it possible for me to learn? Is there steps or an easy way that someone can get involved in learning how to do this? Yes. Now, remember I said I see 14 different aura colors? Yes. Each one of those colors has natural skills or abilities that are easier for more. So, for example, you violets come from the inner eye, the third eye. You see things. That's why you guys can design a home or paint or do whatever. You can already see it before you even start on it. Oh, my it. gosh. And that happens all the time to me. Yeah. Uh, you can already see it happening. And people oh, go, what are you talking about? It's my art. I'll see the whole painting before I paint it. It's this craziest thing. That's a violet. Yeah. They're, they're very um, holographic. They, they're visionary. They see things. Right. So my point is violets are the number one color that typically has the easiest time seeing auras because they've already got a developed third eye. So, um, and yellows, yellows, reds, oranges, yellows, and magentas are more physical. They're more kinesthetic. They like to touch, hug, touch things, right? They're more kinesthetic. So yellows typically develop the ability to sense the aura through their physical bodies first. Mm. So I teach them how to, you know, feel energy off of, of a person or feel, and you know, and people go, well, I feel the heat and I go, that's still energy. That's the same thing. Auras and, auras and heat, it's all vibrating energy, right? So they can feel it more, which is why so many yellows get involved in energy work and healing work because they can feel it with their hands. And okay? so that means you don't need to use your visual, your eyes, because there's been times I've closed my eyes and I've felt like a wash of blue, bright cobalt blue just run over me. And I didn't know where that came from. So yeah, that's, that's, that's like when you're blue in your aura. Yeah. You have a lot of blue in your aura for, for being like a mom. Yeah. <laughs> a mom. That's a mom color. Blues are nurturers. So you have a book called life colors, right? And you break this all down. You break down how each color attributes to a different characteristic of your personality. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, step by step on how somebody can actually learn the process or yes and i can give some people some i can give you some hints now or some tools That'd or some to practice right now so first but i here's the key if people want to develop any advanced ability seeing auras being psychic medium talking to people on the other side bending spoons all of it the first thing that they have the first step is you have to be willing to do it Okay, wow. it'd be amazing how many people are afraid to develop an advanced ability or an expanded ability because it's wrong or it's evil or I could get in trouble or, uh, you know, I might make a mistake. Um, so you have to be willing to do it. Yeah. Okay, so that's one. Another important step with anything, including um, seeing auras, is learning to be still. Mm. Um, you got to quiet your mind a bit to be able to shift. Just like if you go from... Um, waking state to a daydream there's something that has to quiet down in you that to, to shift to that yeah so be willing to be still because our minds chatter a lot and then people try too hard or they think about it too much so learning how to be quiet is helpful um trusting it okay trusting what you see so so then one of the other skills so it's like being willing to do it not being afraid not being afraid of what people are going to think or that you'll see something wrong um being still learning how to quiet your mind Learning how to see aura specifically, one of the one of the practices I have people do is easier to start if you've got somebody in front of a white background. And then what I tell people to do is look with soft eyes. When people try to see it, you're gonna you're gonna strain and you try too hard, it doesn't work. But if you know how when you're staring at something, you're kind of daydreaming, your eyes kind of go to a soft yeah. focus. I, that's what I was wondering if that's how, because I've accidentally seen auras before, but it was when my gaze softened and I kind of, it was like in a daydream almost. Yeah, that's it. So I tell people either just look past the person's head. And by the way, the aura is usually strongest and brightest around the head. Um, that's why the, those old pictures, they painted halos around people. Oh. They, were seeing the, they were seeing the aura. That whoever they were painting yeah. around the saint, the spiritual teacher, must have had a very strong aura that people could actually see it. Right. Okay. So it usually shows up strongest around the head. It's the best place to practice. And then you either just 
softly gaze past the person's head, whether it's above it or to the side, or stare at something, their forehead, their nose, something on the face, but just kind of soft eyes. And typically what people first start seeing, and it happened for me too, is a white glow. You usually see a transparent or white glow coming off the person's head first. Do not think that's an optical illusion. You're actually seeing the energy field. Um, and then in, in time, when you really start keep practicing, keep practicing, again, not trying, some people develop the ability to see the colors. And I tell people, don't get attached that you've got to see the colors, just knowing that you can see an aura could be fun. Don't get attached to it. It's not something that you have to do. It's just kind of fun to show. That will block you, right? That energy of the, the exactly. technical. <laughs> But that's one of the tools to just practice. Uh, like even pra you can practice with a tree, you can practice with an animal. Just yeah, I was to ask you about that. So inanimate objects, as we know, everything is based on energy and has energy fields. I'm wondering if like a plant glows or has different auras or like you have a lot of plants in your house. And I just wonder, like, do you ever tune into your plants? Um, what I've seen now, what I see around people and oddly enough, dolphins, I see similar colors from around dolphins that I see around people. Um, other animals, and I'll get to plants in a minute, animals um, other than dolphins, and I haven't been able to check out whales that much or elephants. I have a sense that they're there, but in most animals, when I see animals, they either have a blue, a silver blue aura, which means they know they're an animal, or they have a golden yellow color around them, which means they think they're a person. Okay. And it's funny if you talk to people, they go, oh, yeah, my dog, my dog definitely yellow gold. Is I go, yeah. So I my stopped. cat has it. the blue silver. My dog has <laughs> the human aspect. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And not just the human behavior. They actually believe they're a human. Right. You know? Yeah. So, she argues with us like she's definitely human. So. There you go. Now, with plants, trees, things like that, um, I usually just see white around them. So I haven't they're seen in their kind of pure state. They're just in their, they're in their essence. It's not like the, the personality, like the human personality and or a life purpose. That's like greens came here to do this and blues came here to do this. It's plants aren't like that, that I can see. Now, okay. I don't know if this is relevant or even can work, but can auras dictate if there's a health problem or if there's like a kind of something wrong, basically? Yeah. Yes, they don't dictate, they reveal. Reveal. Um, they don't run you. I just, I want people to know that things don't run you like that. They reveal what you've chosen. So, yes, if I see somebody with a faded aura, I know we got a serious health problem. Um, yeah. I saw one woman once, she came to me and her, she had no aura. It was so bizarre. And she knew she had cancer. She died two, three days later. I forget what it was very shortly. But she knew she was dying. So she had no aura. Um, I had a woman come to me once and her aura was extremely faded. And so when I tuned in, I, I discovered she was suicidal. And so we talked about it, found out uh, that's a long story, but I saw her, her deceased husband standing around her and he had committed suicide and not left a note. And so she was blaming herself. And so she was going to kill herself. And the husband came through to say, look, this is why that I just got diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I didn't want to live that way, blah, blah, blah. So I, and so after she found out and she got to talk to her husband, her aura came back and she didn't commit suicide. Oh my God, that just gave me chills. Yeah, <gasps> I went, went skydiving once and, it, and the, the guys on the plane, because of my friends, found out that I could see auras and blah, blah, all that bit. So each one of them, before they jumped out of the plane, they go, Pam, do I have an aura? It's like, oh, because <laughs> if someone did not die, a lot of times they don't have an aura. So, because their energy field, I, their life force starts leaving their body. So, yes. And if somebody's got a health issue, a lot of times their aura looks weak or there's a spot like, you know, something's off in their digestive tract or something. It looks a little thin or weak. So, yes, it reveals that there's a health issue. Wow. So aura reading is not just for entertainment or just to kind of match or connect the dots. It's, it's actually can go help you go deeper into somebody's actual infrastructure so you can feel where a person yeah. is at. If you if maybe you haven't developed your skills in other areas, like empathic people just automatically feel emotions. Uh, some people don't have those abilities. And so maybe like something like this, I don't know, is this another doorway that can actually take you into empathy probably if you haven't? Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's another way to connect with people and understand them. Um, so it's, it's really useful. I mean, some people it's like really useful for them to understand their astrological charts. Right. It helps them understand their 
plan, their theme, who they are. It's the same with the auras. Um, it helps a lot of times when I do aura readings for people. And it's, again, it's not the only thing I do. You know, what else do you do? Well, I mean, I, I well, let me finish with that. Typical violet. <laughs> I let's go violet. So tell me more. <laughs> different. I can't get to the punchline fast enough for a violet. They go 150 and I go, I'm talking as fast as I can. Right. Um, I get there. Come but on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Violet. Crap, let's go, let's go. And this one over here and this one over here and this one over here. So, ah, I'm talking as fast. Anyway, um, I forgot what we were even saying, but um, uh, it's, it's, helpful for, it's helpful. I have a lot of people come because they don't understand their life purpose and it's revealed in their aura colors or their career, like I'm in a job I don't like, you know what, and I go, well, you know, you're a blue, and this is what blues do. Blues are teachers, counselors, and nurses. They want to nurture people. They want to help people, you know, or their moms, or they're very psychic. So understanding the aura color is really helpful to help a person validate and understand who they really are, and each other, and relationships. Wow. It really helps with relationships. Now, what was your next question, Miss Violet? I wanted to know what else do you uh, can do? What are your other abilities? Oh, well, um, okay. So once you can develop the ability to get outside the box, to expand your consciousness, I can see outside of time. So I can see people's past, present, future. I do a lot of future helping guide people and not to take away their free will because I am a big comp um, proponent of free will. Mm -hmm. But what will happen is I'll look at some, you know, I'll tune in and I'll go, you know what, on the path you're on right now, you know, and most people will know this. I'll go, you're headed for a divorce or you know, you're, you're, you're headed for some health issues. I've had, seen that a lot. So and that's like, like a clairvoyance or yeah, it's a clairvoyance. Yeah, foretelling based on a lot of factors. You can feel and see a projection. I can see pictures. I can see where they're headed based on their current beliefs, current actions, current right. decisions, current, you know, emotion, current, what they're, where they're headed in life. And if it's not a positive thing, we look at what their soul is saying they can do to change it. Right. I can talk to their soul. I can see... Um, their past and see what trauma they're still holding on to from their childhood or whatever. So in other words, I can go outside of time and see everything simultaneously. Have you can, ever taken yourself back into your own starseed lineage to see maybe where your home planet is or the different lineages that you might, uh, the, the, I've kind of like some people just feel an affinity towards certain planetary systems over another. So like me, I have Palladian and then I have Lyrian, which is the originating. And then I have uh, some Syrian uh, in my lineage. Like I could feel it. I can see how it matches. I don't know yeah. if you've done any work on that area. It's been the, the, the resonance that I have, um, and I can also see past, past lives and future lives. They're happening simultaneously. Um, my resonance, my memory has gone back to... Um, Delphi. I know I've been an oracle in Delphi. Wow. So might have been either one memories and connections of other lives I've had on this plane and or in other realms. I haven't, mine haven't, I haven't um, been drawn to an affinity to other like Palladian or. Right. Um, so you literally are bringing these skill sets from this, from this planetary system. Cause these are very advanced. These are all in telepathic communications, energy reading, this is all in connecting it at higher vibrations. So you're bringing all of this forward here to this planet and using it as a skill and a tool to help other people to evolve. And this is what I talk about all the time in my group is once you start to develop your, your sense of self and you develop more about your intuition and what you can do and your talents, you can start bringing it to the world. So you're like a perfect example of somebody who did that. And you are helping people by hundreds of thousands of people around the world and helping them to discover more about who they are and how to find calmness and peace. Cause that's the ultimate goal, right? Is we want to ease the mind and the hearts of the people that we talk to. Well, we're evolving. We're, we're becoming more conscious. We're waking up. We're becoming, so we're, I, I'm bringing skill sets from our souls. Yeah. I, I, I come from a level of where, where my connection has been is through higher consciousness to yeah. our souls through who we really are, no matter where we, if we were on other star systems, other planets, other planes, who we really are as beings, as right. soul, as right. entities that are extremely expansive, no matter what other lives we've had or where we come from or anything, right. who we are. As it's essence. like an all-inclusive energy field that just, it's kind of, I always see it like a, uh, it's like a fountain, right? Like it just, it's, it's like you're drawing from all the sources around you and all of your lives and multidimensional selves and you bring it in. It's like you're, you're honing in and like developing, developing it into some sort of like 
it's a very structured way to see things and to hear things and to communicate, right? It's like very precise information. That's, how, that's the best way I could explain what it feels yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, uh, to me, I believe that we're evolving and expanding our consciousness and becoming more and more aware that we're not so limited. Right. We're not the little limited biological that we have these amazing abilities as souls, as beings. I love um, that in your TEDx talk, that's what you really, really focused on how many people don't realize that they have these abilities and these gifts. And we're not taught that, but we all have it. And I like the way you said it. It was very like, Get with the program, everyone. We come from the stars. We come from another place where we have this information, like we all do. Yeah. To me, it makes life more interesting, more fun, um, um, more exciting, more love-filled, more expansive. And for me, the more freedom we have, the more we realize who we are, and the more freedom we have, the more fun we have. Now, some people are not comfortable with freedom. They want structure, which is okay. Right. We're here to have structure in this lifetime. That's fine. For me... Well, let's put it this way. Every time we've discovered something new, whether it was that the world was round, not flat, mm -hmm. we had more freedom. Um, as soon as we discovered that, you know, um, we could fly, we had more freedom. We right. could get around the world in a matter of hours instead of months or years, right? That gives us more freedom, more choice. I like freedom. I like choice. I like being able to see. It's, it's a greater way to play right. with who we are. And to me, it reduces fear. It reduces um, competition. We're not afraid of somebody else. We're like, oh, I see who you are. I see what we're doing here. We're having fun. You know, we're expanding. We're exploring. Expand so that perspective. Helps. Yes. So you pull yourself back. You get a bigger picture. You get a more advanced view, and it yeah. just feels better. So you're not like nose to the glass of like in the laboratory studying. You know yeah. what's wrong with this world. Okay. So one thing I really wanted to bring up that I don't know if anybody's mentioned this to you, but so I met you like about. I think close to 10 years ago. It was in the early days when I first met Riz. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've kept up with you and I've watched things and I've seen you online and I've heard things, but I've never, you know, I haven't actually physically seen you, I don't think, for 10 years. Is that correct? Yeah. Which made funny. a huge impression on me when I first met you. And mm -hmm. the impression was, wow, this woman is connected. Like, I, your home, your life, everything about you was like, you know, you had like your, your, you had your, your, your ship had landed. Like it was like solid. And I just love the feeling of being around you. And it was so beautiful in your house and how you saw your environment and how you saw yourself. And I was just in the early stages of awakening. So here I am 10 years later and we get to talk. You have not changed. You are exactly the same level of energy and jubilance and, and like fire. <laughs> <laughs> you are exactly how I remember you, which is incredible because you're in your life path, you're in your life journey. And so it's re-energizing you all the time. So it's like you, it's like ageless. You just stay in your truth, you know? So that's what I love about you. You're always consistent. I think you'll see that in a lot of really, you know, profound healers and healers that are very, you know, in tune with themselves. You'll see this consistency that lasts for durations of time, decades at a time. Well, thank you for that compliment. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I was a baby. I was a baby star seed, and I walked into your house. I thought I walked into Atlantis. I couldn't believe what was happening. I was like, it was an ocean view, and then everything was like it was Atlantean. And I didn't even know anything about Atlantis that much at the time. And I was so struck by the way you felt about yourself, your environment, who you were, how it reflected on you. And it left a big impression on me. I just want to let you know that people who are just beginning and they meet you, like, you, I don't know if you realize you leave that impression. <laughs> no, but no, I don't. Thank you. I don't get out much. <laughs> right. I don't know what's out there. It's just, I'm, I'm just doing my thing. And I do continually grow and expand and learn new things and discover new things. But Thank you for saying, I, I want to be a consistent light. Yeah. So thank you well, your voice that. is heard and it's consistent and it does reach everyone. And the people that are, are listening, you know, it's funny about auras. It's, you know, because it's representing, like it's, it's showing us what we're, what we're emanating. You yourself as a being, that violet light of you, like if we, you emanate and you're felt so strong. And I know it's not just me. I know there's other people watching that can feel your energy. So that's kind of like a case in point to what you were talking about, having that certain color light, you can actually feel it. So I just wanted to bring it home to people right now watching you. You're watching a violet talk, <laughs> two violets actually, but you're getting to hear what it sounds like when somebody is coming from that color, 
spectrum. So does this have anything to do with the um, the rays when people talk about the you know the twelve rays and the rays? Um, maybe I don't really know. I mean, people ask me if it's connected with the chakras, and I go, it's a, it's all connected. Right. It's just a system. Um, but you know, chakras are energy too, right? So it's all it's all energy. It's just different ways of describing it, different ways of helping people understand it. Right. Um, violet rays, whatever. And by the way, I was born a blue yellow. I've added the violet. You were born a yellow violet, and you've added blue. So we yes. have. <laughs> Colors. How do you know? I've been seeing so much blue everywhere. I just surrounded in blue. I think I live in the ocean at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, blues are very nurturing. They're very loving, very much about relationships and people and helping and kindness and spirituality. Yes. Blue colors, indigos, crystals, lavenders, they're all the spiritual colors. Yes. So you have two of the spiritual colors. Yes. Yeah, I'm feeling really good in those colors, and, and those colors are feeling good in me. Um, actually, being an artist, I wanted to also bring this up to you. So I really believe in color therapy. I really believe in visual art meditations and anything to do with any kind of color communication. I'm a huge believer in that because each color has its own frequency and has its own sound, actually, and its own vibration if you really can listen. And I've had huge healings just with focusing on one particular color. So like turquoise, for example, is what uh, turquoise came into my life and launched me into my fashion design business that I wanted to do. And I didn't even know I wanted to do, but I needed some outlet and turquoise came in and I followed that color all the way through jackets and runway shows and you name it. I, it blew my life open in the fashion world. And that was just from studying the color turquoise. Yeah. It guided me all the way here. So you know, and blue for me right now, it's guiding me. So it's telling me a lot of information. So it's not just understanding the colors that you have, right? It's also understanding the vibration of what that means. Like you take it in, like it, it's almost feeding you more information about who yeah, you are. Yeah. And also in alignment with that, um, the colors, some, comp some, the person, again, I see aura colors and their personality types that go with it. And some of them are really compatible and others are going to have a rough time. Oh, like a, with a yellow, like <clears throat> relationship wise. So when you say, yeah, you can feel the frequency, you can feel the energy. There's certain colors that are hard for other colors to be around. So can you give so me for example? example? Yeah. So um, a dramatic one is like two dramatic ones real quick are yellows and greens. They, they really are very opposite. So yellows are fun, loving, free spirited kids and want to play and do creative things and fun. And it's not about money for a yellow. It is for greens and violets and reds, but not for a yellow. Yellows want fun and freedom. And sometimes they can get money. It kind of just disintegrates in their hands. Right. Uh -huh. And they need variety. Yellows want to do some of this and this and this and this and this. Right. They need variety. Greens are the type A workaholics on the planet. So they're all about business and CEO and sales and money and drive and greens are organized and efficient and write lists and yellows don't write lists. Yellows start out with lists and then they lose the list or they don't complete it. They don't like lists. Right. Greens are list makers and or, do you understand money, drive, accomplishment. So when a yellow's over here being a big kid, greens can, ah, you should, you know, organize, get, right. stop doing, go make money. When are you going to grow up? Uh, so you can see how that could be really hard on a yellow. Absolutely. Yellows want to please and make people happy and help people heal and, you know, just bring joy to the planet. Yellows are here to bring joy to the planet or to help people or beings or animals heal, right? Right. Greens, greens are the ones that create jobs for people. Do you understand? Know Corporations, business, real estate sales, you know, it's money and, and things and right. you know, like, they're, they have a different life plan here, a different life purpose. Now, when they're out of power, meaning there's negative sides to each one of the colors, whoa, boy, we can have a real rough time. And a green on a yellow can actually make a yellow sick because they're on them all the time. They pound on. Oh, yeah, because yellows, when you yellows are not happy, it goes right into your bodies. It shows up in your health. Oh, true. And, mm -hmm. um, with greens, greens are anyway. So you see the difference, right? Now, two of the other opposites are like violets and tans. Violets are 150. You see how fast I'm talking? That's because you're a violet. 150. What about 150? What about this one over here? And what about this? Violets have so many projects they want to do, but they're visionaries. Right. And they like creating new projects. They don't like taking care of the details of handling those projects. Tans are the ones that are the detail oriented. But when a violet goes, 
150, I've got this dream, this vision, I need to go do this. Tans and greens are the two colors that go, well, that's not practical. That's not possible. You can't make money doing that. What are you doing? You're paying for that. And so they can, they, they can either get the system for a violet or they can suppress them and say, it's not practical. It's not logical. Go get a job. You can't do your dream. And so those two colors, and violets are visionaries and tans are more logic and scientific and grounded. Do you know what I mean? So, Well, I can see, well, this would really help if, let's say, a couple did uh, color therapy or color reading. And they that's funny that I said color therapy, but color mm -hmm. reading. Um, so let's say they got together and they found out that they had these two kind of mixed match colors. I mean, just knowing about it can help them ease some of that tension because they realize that that's just who they are and they don't have to make the other person wrong for it. Just find other yeah. ways. Well, and there's a way to bring the best out of each other. So for example, yellows are very creative. Greens know how to make money. So it's like, and yellows are not always good with money. So it's like, I like creating, but I'm not worried about money. So green can take those creative ideas and, and make them money, right? Right. So, um, so they can bring the best out of people. Or if a violet has a dream and a vision and they're in love, the tan can support, and be the ground for that violet to go ahead and fly, be the stable force so somebody gets to fly. So... I mean, obviously, children have auras. Are they different than adult auras? Do they look different or they're about no. the same? They're the same. They're the same. They're the same. So can you, and you can teach a parent to learn to read their child's aura so that they can kind of understand their development and their growth. And I think that would help, right? In oh, God. I mean, I used to work in the school system. And so teachers and parents understanding that their child is an indigo or a crystal oh. or a lavender or, you know, a red once they understand. So first of all, I do have a website with a free quiz on it, you know, and free videos. So then go watch them. Um, I've also got two books. I've got life. Well, I've got four books, but I have life colors and love colors are about the, the aura colors. One's about all the basic stuff, which includes kids and love colors is all about relationships and how to get along and who's compatible and where to even find the person that's got a compatible aura color because oh, wow. all the colors hang out. Colors are drawn to different places to live they have particular hobbies you know they're into certain things so if you want to meet a violet that's where you go if you want to meet a red you go to the gym so you know you what football about, game too fast for me to say what about like los angeles california this huge... southern california is very yellow okay it's predominantly yellow yellow is like sunshine and, and nature and outdoors and let's go to the beach let's go hiking you know let's be creative let's play so um, true. <laughs> Hollywood, Hollywood's very violet, but ultimately Southern California is yellow. So yellow's typically like sunshine and playing outdoors in nature. Well, I'm really curious I, about New York then. New York's very green, green with ah, violet. Ah, okay. We got the stock market there. We got Wall Street there, green business. Let's go. But it's green and violet. So then we've also got um, the, the, the theater district. We've got Broadway there, right? So it's green with Wall Street. It's violet with the entertainment business. But both of those colors are driven. Greens go one, two, let's go, you know, 10. Violets go 150. Greens. I, so like if you were to go to Sedona, Arizona, for instance, and there's so many spiritual centers. And so, you know, it's kind of a collective people coming together to learn kind of the same things. And there's vortexes. And so you'll see a lot of probably blue violets come together, some yellow, blue violets or... Um, Arizona is predominantly, watch, there's a little pocket in there. So Arizona is predominantly a yellow tan state. Okay, so yellow's nature, whatever, tan, more grounded, quiet, responsible, right? Right. Um, Sedona specifically is yellow and violet. So there's a little yellow violet pocket in, just like um, Hollywood is violet, a yellow violet in the midst of Cal Southern California being yellow. Northern California is predominantly violet, by the way. San Francisco is predominantly violet. That's where the music scene came from and the, the hippies started. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's very violent. Which is, all the way up the northern coast of the U.S., right? So all the way up to like Vancouver or are we just talking? Uh, no, the Pacific Northwest, specifically Vancouver, Seattle, that whole area. That is actually a violet vortex. I'm seeing so many violets being drawn up there again. And I saw that years ago and then it quieted down. And now I can't even tell you how many of my violet clients are being drawn go up to the Pacific Northwest right now. I go, okay, something's up. Wow. All the I, I mean, oh, just yeah. being a violet myself, I can tell you what my draw is, is nature, the trees, the whales, the big waves, the ocean. It's so massive and majestic. I just love that feeling of that magical kind of majestic yeah. feeling. Those are words for violets. It's majestic. <laughs> violets need big. They, they need to be inspired and by the beauty by their environment. So they need either 
sky, big ocean, big mountains, big trees. They need something that inspires them. But it's more than that. There's a spiritual energy happening up there. That's it's very violet. And yellow's not like nature. But typically, yellow's like warmer climates where violet's like they can do seasons. Oh, that makes so much sense because I don't go to the tropics that much. You know, as much as I like the idea of it, I'm drawn to some warm waters. Of course, who doesn't want to be in crystal aquamarine green water? But I don't go out of my way to go to an island. I will go to the north. I'll go to the mountains. I'll go to the massive, majestic cliffs. I want to see them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. oh, but you already live in Southern California, so there's your yellow. Yeah, okay. take care of the yellow. Yeah. And then your violet is like, ah, oh, I need to be inspired. I need yeah. those big trees, those big, ah, I need to be inspired. And vi- that's a key word for violets. They want to be inspired. Violets are here to inspire, empower, and educate the masses. Mm. Improve the quality of life here for people, to get them to shift their thinking, to expand it. The beetles were all yellow violet. Um, Oprah, well, they're more violet with yellow, but they're all yellow violets. Oprah's Violet Yellow, Spielberg, George Lucas, um, Sting, um, George George and Amal Clooney are both Violet Yellows. Do you see how they found each other? I picked up on something with that union. They look like twin flames to me. I mean, there's some sort of equalization there that I... Yeah, he found his match finally. Absolutely. Yeah. And you and Riz are both Violet Yellows. Yes. Yeah. Yep. He's exactly... Yeah, we are the same in that way. Like, we, we are twins, so... (laughs) <laughs> I've been in a in a committed relation. I've been in a relationship now for I think it's we're at thirty seven years now. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, you mentioned um, the story on how you created that relationship, which blew my mind. And I thought it would be such a fun story to end our segment, our introduction to you. Um, your story on how you met him is so fascinating. My jaw dropped. <laughs> That is okay. the best story I have ever heard, and I really want you to please say that, share that story again. <laughs> okay, remember we said expanded consciousness, right? Yes. Uh, over the years, one of the things I've discovered, because I also study quantum physics. I'm not one of the woo-woo, like, airy-fairy type of thing. I want to be grounded. I, I, I want to understand the physics behind what I can do and why. So I study quantum physics. Well, I discovered parallel universes, right? decades ago, way before Stephen Hawking was talking about multiverses any, anyway. So I went, okay, if parallel u- universes are real, which they're saying now there's scientific evidence that they are, then we must be able to use those just like aerodynamics to fly. We must be able to use those to expand our abilities and our freedom. So let me explain to people what it is before I tell the story of how I did it. Okay. Right, right, right. So, in a lay terms, this is how I explain it. You know the room you're in right now, there's probably at least 10 radio stations broadcasting right now. So there's radio waves all around you with programs. You don't know that they exist because you're not tuned into them. So it's not part of your reality. But if you were to go turn on your radio and turn it to, say, 99.9, you're going to hear the music, the talk, the program that's coming out of that. That becomes your reality, right? You're listening to that. If you change it over to 107, now that program, that music, that talk becomes your reality now. That's part of your world. Now, 99.9 is still around you. It's happening all the time, but you're not aware of it because you're not tuned into that frequency. Right. Right. See, our that frequency is an energy, right? Well, um, so years and years ago, I fell in love with this musician. No fear of commitment there. Um, not that all um, other relationships are musicians have a fair commitment, obviously not. But this one did. I fell in love with them when, oh my gosh, that's who I'm supposed to be with. This is my guy, blah, blah, blah. He wanted nothing to do with me. It's like, no, 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 no. You're blonde. I don't like blondes. I like dark hair. No, no, no. I'm not going to be in a relationship. Do you not want to blah, 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 blah. Um, he like, no way, no way, no way. So of course I was heartbroken. I live in California. He actually picked up and moved to the East Coast to join a band over there and said, I'm leaving. I'm not in love with you. I never will be. Leave me alone. Boom. Left, right? So anyway, within a couple of years of that happening, um, I I read about quantum, I read about parallel universes and I went, okay, now <laughs> that means Every, what it basically says is every, every possibility that exi- exists, everything. So in every time you make a choice, you decide to do um, A instead of B. A and B both exist. They just go off into different parallel universes and they both exist. So I went, all right, then there must be a universe where we're actually together. So 
But what I discovered is I had to change my thinking. I had to change my frequency. I had to change how I was feeling. So what I noticed is I'm going to call it universe one In universe one. I noticed I was not, did not have good self-worth. I didn't feel attractive. I felt like I wasn't lovable, Felt like no guy was ever going to be with me. And it was hard to find love. Right. And I went, well, I don't want to be in that universe. And you are in the universe that you, you vibrate with, which they call law of attraction, mm-hmm. same frequency. So I go, this is not a good universe for me. Right. So I did this visualization on a brief, just a brief summary of what I did. I visualized myself opening up a membrane and going into universe number two. And I looked at universe number two and I went, no, he's, he's in, on the East Coast. He loves the band he's playing with. I would feel guilty bringing him back here. He seems happy. So obviously this is not the universe. And I went into a different one and a different one and looked around each time and went, no, I still feel the same about me. And I still have the same belief about him. So right. this is not the universe. I went into universe number five and I went, oh my gosh, I felt lovable. I saw him. I felt like we were a couple. I actually, in that universe, I could smell the grass. I could feel the sun on my, I had done a meditation to do this, by the way. I felt the sun, I smelled the grass. I knew it was a real universe. I knew it existed, it was real. And in that one, I saw him giving notice to the band. He'd been there for two years now, okay? I had not contacted him. Giving notice to the band he was with, not seeing the girl he had been seeing, you know, breaking up with her because she was too young, it didn't work. He was gonna go to Iowa to see his meditating friends. He was gonna go to LA to see his rock and roll friends. And he was coming back to Santa Barbara. And I saw that clear as day and I felt different. I knew that we were a couple in that one and that we loved each other. I felt it. I, I, I could feel it in every cell of my body. Well, I did that meditation and had that experience. And two weeks later, now I hadn't talked to him for two years. Two weeks later, I called him. Now, remember, I'm not stalking him because that's in, in universe number five. I'm not stalking him. We're a couple. I'm calling him. And it's like, how are you doing? And he goes, well, two weeks ago, I gave notice to the band. I was seeing this girl. We're not going to see each other anymore. It's not right. I'm going to Iowa. I'm going to LA and I'm coming back to Santa Barbara. We have been together now over 30 some years. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's it's awesome not, story. Not that I didn't control. I didn't manipulate. I shifted my beliefs and my frequency, which brought me into a different universe. Now, here's the cool thing. Because people go, oh, well, he was probably still in love with you, you know, in the first place. And he was just denying it. And I go, no, I felt different. He was different. I changed over here. He changed over here. Not only that, in universe number one, all my girlfriends were single and complaining about it. They want to get married. They want to have children. They were all complaining. When I shifted into universe number five, we were all engaged. They all had boyfriends. They ended up, some of them were pregnant. And I wanted to go to them and go, Wow, in this universe over here, you were single complaining about it. And but 30 some years ago, I didn't feel I could tell people that. I thought they'd think I was crazy. So, but they all changed. Starting to understand parallel universes a little bit. It's like changing the channel on your TV. We know how to do that. You know, we just change the channel. We don't know we can do that in our own lives because we think we've been trained to believe there's only one reality. And that's not true. Just like we thought there was only one planet or one continent or one solar system. We think there's only one reality and we're, that's not true. We create our reality all the time based on our thoughts, our beliefs, our emotions. And so that's what shifts our reality and it's dramatic. Here's the difference. When I stepped into universe number five, I didn't have to overcome anything in universe one. I didn't have to go and look at my self-worth issues. I didn't have to change his mind. I didn't have to try and get him to love me. I didn't have to do any of that. I dropped it. I stopped believing in that one. I just changed it and went into a new realm, a new reality. A new- your, intel- and your entire cellular structure shifted into this new <laughs> framework of yeah. new belief system, which you can yeah. do anything. But, and so you saw yourself, like if you want to change careers or, or whatever, you can see yourself in this projection. And so you believed it with your heart and soul and you sent out like law of attraction. You sent out those rockets of desire and you sent out that information and it was received and that's huge i I was it i was it it wasn't like do you understand over here and by the way when people go well i try to do this but it didn't work and i go then you're believing in universe one more than you are five it's true five it's just as real it's just like changing the channel on the tv i'm telling you it's just and and all you have to do though is it is the law of attraction or 
frequency, vibration, whatever you want to call it, whatever you frequent, whatever frequency you're set at, just like a radio station, you set over to this frequency, you're going to experience that frequency. Right. Haven't you had those days where everything seems to go wrong and you're in a bad mood and one thing after another, go, that's the frequency you're set at. You change it. We know how to change if you're listening to a, a, a song you don't like. Oh, my dog died and my truck broke down. It's like, ah, I don't want to listen to that. So I changed the channel. Right. We just don't know we can do that with our lives and we can. And it's so much easier. It's so much faster. It's so amazing. We just haven't been taught that that's real. But quantum physics is saying it is real. We just haven't caught up with it yet. Pamela is so beautiful. Thank you so much. You are an exquisite human being. I'm so in honored that you showed up and I'm so thankful that you shared this information and I know so many people are going to get something out of it and if they want to reach you what's the best uh, website they can go to my website is auracolors.com a-u-r-a colors c-o-l-o-r-s.com everything's on their videos courses okay I'll be posting the description below but thank you so much and I'm sure we'll continue on into different universes me and you <laughs> we'll see each other somewhere else but thank you again and i hope you have a blessed day today but thank you for this interview thank you so much for what you're doing i really appreciate you bringing all this information and expanded thinking to the masses it's so awesome thank you all right see you see you everybody love you namaste see you on your uh, group post bye bye <laughs>